Uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm Colin Myers, and uh, today we're going to walk through validating ETH2 and the economics and rewards that you will receive as a validator. Uh, but we're going to do it in space. Uh, so we're going to make it fun, we're going to make it interactive, and it's going to be quite cool. Um, so, look, overall, those of you plugged into the space, this is um, a topic that doesn't have a lot of transparency. It's super crucial. These are distributed systems with incentive models, and there's been a few people in the ecosystem published research on what the incentives for ETH2 are. Uh, but most recently, Consensus and the EM have been working together on a coordinated effort to put out what we're calling the ETH2 calculator, um, which we will release. And I have a model that everyone can have in a Telegram group that we'll launch after this. Uh, but ultimately, this is a way to kind of educate everyone on uh, a super important topic that it's not talked about too much. Um, so let's get started. So today, um, we have a special guest star. Her name is Alice. <clears throat> She's going to be uh, validating the ETH2 chain in space. So over the journey, um, we're going to touch on a few topics uh, kind of leading up to what the ETH2 calculator is. Uh, we're going to start with what is the beacon chain? I'm sure everyone here has heard about the beacon chain. Um, DevCon is basically the, the ETH2 conference. Um, uh, like, how do I become a validator? Um, what is Alice responsible for? How does she stay a validator? And then ultimately, uh, what does she get in return for doing so? Um, we're then going to walk through some economics of phase zero, as this is the big thing that we're all gearing up for. Um, it's the event that basically bootstraps the beacon chain. Uh, we're going to walk through the results, and then we'll talk about the ETH2 calculator and how everyone can get involved and what the ultimate intentions of it are. So let's just start high level. Um, I'm sure everyone has also probably seen this chart a million times, but we're going to primarily be focusing today on the beacon chain, which is the coordination layer of the spine of ETH2. Um, it's the main part where all the action happens, and this is where Alice and all our friends hang out. Um, so the coordination layer itself, you can think of it, it does uh, a few key components. Um, it stores and manages Alice and all their friends. Um, it provides a random component to basically select who gets to validate. Uh, this is where the block proposal takes place. This is where I get slashed or I get tokens in return for my actions. Uh, and then committees and cross-link processing, which is a bit more will take place and make sense once they're sharding in, but um, in the future this is also, all of that is included, it takes place inside of the beacon chain. So let's just talk about the phases. Um, I'm not going to talk about phase two today because it's a bit out there and it's a bit still unknown. There's a lot of good work being done by teams like Quilt uh, to make phase two a reality and kind of get people on board and skipping ahead now that it's zero and one, the specs are firm and people are spending time on phase two. Um, the big thing is, is that between phase zero and phase one, the economics do not change. But between phase zero and phase two, the economics will change uh, and we'll get into that. So let's just talk about what phase zero does not include. There's no EVM, there's no smart contracts, you cannot transfer assets and there's no accounts. Uh, so it's basically, it's the heavy lifting of the system, however, there's really no activity inside of it. Uh, it's just basically propagating and applying FFG, uh, handing out your returns and slashing. But we hope that everyone acts honestly during this time period and that doesn't happen. Um, I also won't address slashing any of this today. Um, that is kind of a V2 of the model and essentially what we're just going to do is talk about uh, the perspective of an honest validator. Um, phase one, you can think of as Bootstrapping for uh, cross-linking. Uh, this is going to be empty shard blocks, but they will be all communicating together, but there won't be anything inside of them. So in phase one, shards exist, um, but there's really nothing inside of them. We're just making sure that uh, the machine operates as it's supposed to. So I'm Alice. I have uh, 32 ETH. Uh, I want to join. How do I do so? Uh, so the first thing that you're going to need is a beacon node. Uh, a beacon node can mean a few different things. Um, it can mean a laptop, it can mean a desktop computer, or it can mean a uh, VPS. Uh, if you are doing this in larger quantities, or you're worried about consistency of uh, uptime in your own household, or if you're a nomad. Uh, to be honest with you, most people in this industry are, if they have larger stacks of ETH, and um, we base the model and some analysis on VPS being a key option for these people. Uh, you'll need to choose your client of choice. This includes Artemis, this includes uh, Prism. Um, there's six to seven different ones. Everyone, I'm sure, has seen the recent interop news behind all that, so there's really great progress being made on that side of the equation, but that's kind of how you get started. You need to have those two core things to be a part of this. 
Um, so once that takes place, there will be a deposit ceremony. Uh, it was supposed to happen at DEF CON, uh, but it has been recently delayed due to BLS. Uh, so now we're kind of targeting January 2020 or at some point during the beginning of next year. Um, there's a few more technical steps here that, um, that we'll go through about generating a PK and then basically having a withdrawal key, which can be pulled, but your PK at all times needs to be hot. Um, so that you can continually add activity um, to the chain. Um, it's not transferable to ETH2 that you get in return. So a requirement that's not technical is something more of like a risk tolerance. So if you participate in this level of it, um, you must understand that there's going to be a, a time gap, which is now more defined than what it was before. Um, but your ETH1 gets burned and you get that in return for it. Um, and you can't do anything with it uh, until a certain point in time when it's unclear. It's more clear than what it was in the past, but it's more of a human risk parameter that you have to think about. So, you know, what do I have to do? Um, I've done all the pre-steps, I have my ETH, I've gone through the process, I've figured out how to use the command line, I've done all this complex stuff, um, so now what do I actually have to do? Uh, so there's two main things that take place um, as a participant inside of ETH2. Um, you propose new blocks, this happens infrequently, and then you, and then you attest, which is uh, the signing of new blocks. This happens much more often and it's much more important to the overall system of how it works. So those are two main things. There's some other small nuanced things that, that exist, but um, it's a lot to get through in 20 minutes, so we're just going to keep it high level. Those are the two main things that you do. Those are your two actions. So now let's talk about, you know, where do these come from? Um, what are they? Um, I'm given tokens in return for certain actions. Uh, I have to have certain things to give them. So now let's talk about what they are and where they come from. So the FFG award uh, is what you receive in phase zero. Um, that is actually broke up into five components. Um, a bit too technical for what we're going to talk about today, but essentially that is chopped up uh, into uh, five different things. Um, and that's the base reward, is what you will receive in phase zero and phase one uh, for bootstrapping the system. Um, there will be no uh, network fees until phase two, uh, and then later on in phase two as well, you can essentially you know, call people out for this and you can receive something in return for doing that as well. Um, in the model that we built, uh, it includes all of it and it can be toggled, uh, but the primary announcements today will be phase zero. So let's talk about the system, right? Um, how is this thing designed? Uh, where are the main rewards coming from? Uh, and ultimately, what are the key drivers? Um, all economic models consist of key drivers. They can be sensitized or they can be played with. Uh, ETH2 has, in my opinion, some, some very different and actually mature proof of stake uh, design methodologies behind it, even though POS has just been introduced. Um, so let's talk about a few of those. So number one, total ETH at stake. Um, number two, base reward. Number three, what is the average network percent online of all the participants inside of the system? Number one, total ETH at stake. Um, you can think of this as, you can see in the chart here, the more that is stake in the network, the less that I get. Um, these two red dots are two key points of bootstrapping this system. Uh, two million ETH staked is the first red dot, uh, and 4.2 million ETH is the second red dot, and we'll dig a bit more into what those mean and why they're important. Uh, but ultimately, I guess a comment that I'd like to make about how this system is designed is that you know people have uh, different ways of saying what the return is or what the reward level is on a proof of stake protocol. Uh, most people are launching POS from dead start with like zero token distribution. Um, this model that ETH2 is based on is actually more of a mature POS where unless you have a proper token distribution, uh, and everything is already in the ecosystem, um, you aren't able to do this. Um, I'm also a big proponent of uh, not having a cap. Um, so people run POS networks sometimes with essentially mining schedules with like a fixed amount of tokens. Ethereum, it's a big debate of should there be a cap on the supply or not. Um, I personally believe that you can't run this economic model if there is a cap. But would love to have a debate about it. People have different thoughts. Second part of it, base reward factor. Um, right now, the spec is at 64. Uh, and this is basically showing you from 2 to 10 million ETH what you would receive uh, with a bunch of fixed variables, which will all be inside of the model. 
but the primary point of this is to show that um, as the base reward increases, what I get in return also increases, and as the amount of value in the network stays, um, it decreases over time. So it's staying true to its uh, design principles and it matches uh, what we just looked at. The third factor is your average network percent online. Um, this one I think is quite cool um, and not really spoke about too much. So it's basically like a collective reward mindset um, where if everyone in the network is providing up time and being consistent with their behavior, um, then everyone else gets something in return for it. So what it does is it, it incentivizes collectively better behavior for everyone um, to stay online and to stay live. Um, it's a primary driver of what the of what you get out in return, um, and I haven't seen it collectively implemented inside of other POS protocols. So I, I find this person to be one of the more uh, ingenious things that needs to. I'm interested to see how it plays out. But again, two million needs to take four point two million. Just remember those two; those are very crucial levels. Uh, and for a relative comparison, right now inside of all DeFi protocols, there's two point eight million ether locked. Um, but again, as you can see, from seventy percent to one hundred percent, you're what you receive from the protocol increases over time as you provide more uptime. A fourth component, which is not included in the last two that I just said, but something I think we should talk about is um, a lot of POS protocols, um, I'm not going to name names, but they, what you get in return is based on how many tokens you have, which is quite a centralized element of all of this. So like this is like a whale scale. Um, we have different amounts of uh, clients that you could run on the bottom, it stretches from 1 to 50, which basically means uh, at a protocol level, X cost. Um, if I'm validating with 32 ETH or I'm validating with 1600, um, I receive the same thing in return for it. So achieving economies of scale at the protocol level inside of ETH2 uh, is not something that is possible. It's more about how many clients are stepping on each node. So ultimately, at the end of the day, kind of the premise of this being designed to be the most decentralized actually holds true. Um, so I think this is a really cool thing to, after running the numbers and seeing this come out, um, it's something important to remember because you know, it stays true to the mission. So, the deposit ceremony. Uh, when is this going to happen? This is kind of how everything starts. Um, January 2020 are kind of some of the dates that people have been throwing around. Uh, it was supposed to be here at DevCon, uh, but it kind of gives us a bit more time to educate on economics in my opinion and kind of gather more of a, a collective inclusion of people to be a part of this. Uh, the two million needs, so let's talk about that one, that's important. Um, so to get the chain started, that's equivalent to 65,536 validators. So looking at what my rewards would be in the economics at two million ETH stake uh, is something quite interesting to look at. Uh, the next number that's been highlighted on the charts is 4.2 million ETH. Um, so you can think of this as once we enter phase two and shards are live, what is the minimum amount of ETH that needs to be staked for a fully sharded system to be secure? Um, so I personally think that getting the two million ETH will be fine and we'll get there, but ultimately I think what we really need to do is in this first sprint of all this push to 4.2 million so that when phase two kicks in, um, you know, the call to action uh, won't have to be too severe and distracting and ultimately when sharding takes place, um, everything will be in there. Uh, again, phase zero, uh, network fees not included, um, and your bet is not transferable until phase one. So let's talk about some of the assumptions in the model, um, some, some of the charts that we're up, about to go through. So on the network side of it, um, we take a look at between two and 10 million e staked. Um, I personally think that that's uh, achievable at the 10 million plus end, maybe not in this first phase zero push, but Ultimately, I think that's kind of where the equilibrium will be hit between 10 and 20. 90% um, average online, um, kind of just the base, running the model based on that, but sensitized in the different charts. Uh, base reward 64, and again, no fees. Um, when we take a look at our validator, how Alice is acting, um, she's a single, she's an individual validator, she only has 32 E, she's providing 98% uptime, she has a $250 computer uh, with a two and a half year life on it, so that's uh, basically her cost is scheduled over two and a half years. Um, we don't include router and ISP uh, as cost in this equation, it's kind of a sunk cost. We assume that 
most of your average humans um, that will be participating in this earlier stage will have this, but the model, you can toggle it, um, and you can decide whether or not you think this is needed or unneeded. Um, ETH price is set at 182. Um, it was a bit lower, but you know, death balance went up a bit, so I changed everything uh, in the evening yesterday. Win moon. Um, so, let's talk about phase zero. Now, here's what you're going to get at a pure protocol network level. Uh, this includes no cost, this includes nothing like that. So, you will receive in ETH denominated token inflation 10.4% at that 2 million level, which gets the beacon chain kicked off. Um, call it secure as sharding, which is our 4.2 million level, you will receive 7.2%. Ten point four percent over what time period? Uh, it's annualized. Uh, now let's take a look at what you would receive when applying a net cost. Um, so when these per when these numbers first came out and we run a bunch of models on it um, at the beginning of the year, um, they weren't uh, net positive. Uh, it was in the red, which led me to believe that I don't believe it's a protocol or a foundation's responsibility to, to base the, the design of a protocol on real-world costs, but it must be considered uh, when thinking about making this a reality since it's such a human-based uh, technology. So, at our phase zero, two million to get the beacon chain started, um, you'll receive 6.9%, uh, uh, which I think is quite uh, competitive considering the risk profile and how built out Ethereum is compared to other uh, Proof of stake. Um, so at 4.2 million as well, um, you'll get 3.6%. Uh, so that's that's the ideal setting of um, when we think that the system will be secure and for sharding to go live technically at that level. Um, I'm pretty comfortable with that, to be honest with you. Um, I do think that out in the lower end, to the 10 million, quite low. Um, but then again, it's kind of the call to action of what we're doing here and why we're putting this together is uh, getting insight from people who are economists, um, people who actually look at and understand human behavior and how it flows through like economic uh, cultures. Because right now it's a bunch of technologists and ex-bankers trying to figure this stuff out, which has got us pretty far. Um, but ultimately, um, this needs further insight from other people as well. So this is kind of an interesting one. Um, being at DEF CON, this is kind of the uh, whale scale. Um, I do believe that from a phase zero perspective, like we're going to need not an element of centralization, but we're certainly going to need some larger ETH holders to come in here and bootstrap this thing. Um, so this model, um, this chart within the model, um, is based on using a VPS to DigitalOcean at $20 a month. Uh, and it's, it assumes that you can fit 16 clients on each machine, which is quite conservative, but that can all be flexed inside of the model. Um, and ultimately, this is what your return schedule would be. Uh, again, just to comment on the decentralized design of the protocol, as you can see, economies of scale can only be achieved to a certain degree as a large person on the network, which I think is quite cool. Um, but um, anyone else in the room, this is what you can expect for phase zero if you're interested in helping out. So, you know, what do we, this has been four or five months of putting this together. What is the point of all of it? What do we want to do with it? Um, essentially, we're launching an ETH2 calculator. Um, and the purpose of this is to educate, the purpose of it is to inform. Uh, this is for people who want to validate. This is for people who do research. Um, this, is, this is for anyone who wants to add feedback to it. So it'll be an advanced calculator that has a series of uh, validator assumptions and uh, network assumptions, um, basic and advanced. Um, there's going to be a feedback form as well, which we think is probably going to be the most important thing, where we want all the feedback and comments about the spec and about the economics to take place in one setting. Uh, because ultimately, at this point, if people aren't stoked on the economics, and there's going to need to be a hard force that's going to need to uh, entail a lot of coordination and a lot of thought at this point. Um, so where we're, like, where are we now with all of this? Um, we have it designed. Um, we have all the business logic and model uh, built into it. Um, today, we're going to launch this group here, uh, where I will drop the model into it. Um, and anyone that has questions or anyone that has comments, 
Um, I'm, I'm not going to do that during the talk today, uh, but ultimately we'll do all of that and house it in one kind of single source of truth so that we can continually get feedback on this because uh, it's super crucial to do so. Um, so to kind of close it out, um, there was a lot of people um, who helped with this effort, um, both inside the consensus, at the EF, outside. Um, this is kind of the main list of people here that, that helped out with all this. So uh, it was a coordinated effort for everyone. So shout out to everyone involved because it uh, was a lot of lifting to get this done. Um, and that's it. Um, if you want to hit me up, here's my Telegram and uh, my Twitter. Um, I can't believe both of which were not taken, but they weren't. Um, so please feel free to reach out if you guys have any questions, and I'll drop the model into the Telegram group, uh, and then we can start jamming. Thanks, everyone. Woo.